So now let me show you that how the macro is working. So first let me demonstrate that macro works and then I'll explain you each and every portion of that that how it is really working. So let me just first submit this macro. So now the macro is available here. Now let me run it for this particular data set. So if you look at it is working for all the variables and that's why you see a big note is coming out here. And look at so it has done some of the things and it is doing frequency distribution univariate. It did univariate again. Here it is doing frequency distribution because number of distinct categories less than three and why because if you look at I pr I pass threshold as 25 so anywhere wherever less than 25 it is doing the frequency distribution otherwise it is not doing the frequency distribution so now let me explain you that how I was able to achieve this whole thing so what I did first I pa you know I took this data with what you are passing so if you look at I pass this data I took it here in data NM and I did run the proc contents. The advantage of having proc contents is that this table actually goes into part of data set. I can show it to you if you go in the library, you know, and in go in the work directory, you find underscore content underscore, which is now containing the list of variables. You can see it here. So by this, I know that how many variables are in my data set. So that's the part one. And then what I did here, you know, like if I take the how many rows are in there in this data set, that itself is how many variables. So here, if you look at, I took the output and then I am, I took number of variables from this content, actually count of records into this number of variables and this count star will obviously be how many records are in this data set because this is just counting the number of records and you can see in the log this would have come in the log as well so if you go ahead take a look you know count star from content it is saying that my number of variables is 17 because there are 17 variables this data set has 17 rows and that's what is coming out there in fact like in the result also you know if you look at it is saying you that this particular data set has got 17 variables. So that's the first step where I found how many variables are there. And in fact, I'm going to use that as to run the do command, do i equal to, and you know, if you're not putting anything by default by is one. So it is going to run one to 17. So it's going to run for each, you know, one to 17 times. And what I'm going to do here, I have put underscore n underscore equal to i then do. So if you look at first time what it will do, it will get the first record. So in this contents, it will go and take the first record. So first record will say the variable is age at death and variable type is 1 because 1 is numeric to each character here. And that's why if you look at the first thing that comes in this output is for the variable age at death. The point that I'm trying to say here that, you know, every time running on one record, so every time it is taking one variable and its type. Next, it is putting that variable is this and variable type is this, which you'll see in the first time it will put age at death and it will put numeric. So if you look at variable is age at death and variable type is one, one stands for numeric. Now what I'm going to do, I am taking proc SQL no print and select count distinct variable from the 
in two distinct categories from original data sets. If you look at here, I'm not using content, rather I'm using the original data set. So that way I'm getting to know for age variable, how many distinct categories are possible. And that's what it is putting in log. So if you look at, it is saying number of distinct categories 58. And look at what, how I'm using it against the threshold. So here, if this is less than the threshold, category cutoff, which was 25, because if you look at, I passed 25. So if it is less than number of distinct categories for the variable is less than the threshold beyond which I do not want to run proc freq, it is going to run proc freq. And you look at it saying the proc freq for variable as number of distinct categories this much. So if number of distinct category less than 25, in my case, I will get the frequency distribution. And that's the reason for the first variable, age at death, it did not run the frequency distribution. And it will say that also, like if you look at M logic, it will say it's a false. So look at here. So because I am huge, I am logic, give me a See, it is saying if the condition is false. So this condition is not satisfied and that's the reason it did not run the proc freq. So that's how I am using it here and running it only proc freq for, the, for those variables where number of distinct categories are less than a particular threshold. And here I have used the option missing. That's why missing will come as a category. So even in some cases where like you'll see in this data where everything is missing, it has come here. Let me show it to you. So if you look at, so it is saying proc freq three category, it has come here, here it is populated. One or two variable I had seen which were totally missing but it still came as a category there. So here it is five, so you are getting, let me show you one more. Maybe I would have seen in, yes, look at here. So it has got missing value, some missing. And if the number of category were less than a particular threshold, which is not the case here, otherwise I would have got the, you know, here I have got it. So look at smoking, I have got proc freq and it has got distinct category and look at missing has got included as a separate category here. And this is happening because in this code I have put missing option. Now look at I'm putting if variable type is one, then do univariate with the plot. So for all numeric, if the variable type is unique, uni, uh, num numeric, it will done the uni, it will run the univariate and will produce the result. And after this, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take it to the next row because if you look at, I'm running it from I equal to one to 17. So next time it will become two, it will take the second row. Second row has variable like if you go to the contents, second row has the variable age at start and that's what you see. So if you go there in the this whole thing, you'll find that result, the first result was for age at death and the second variable that was taken for age at start. Look at age at start. So what I'm trying to say that it very much it took all the variable and it did, it worked. Also, you know, the advantage of writing this way is that, you know, once you have written, you could run it for any data set. Probably, let me just show it, that if I'm running it for this data set, sashelp.acc, mg, assc, mgr, which is one of the data set of sashelp. I mean, I had seen this data set here. Let me just check it. So, you see this data set here. If you run it, it will run for the whole, you know, as many variables are there and it will produce the result. So the point that I'm trying to say that once you have run it, you know, it is running for any data set and it is doing these complicated tasks. Otherwise, it 
would have been a nightmare that if you run every time look at the how many distinct categories are there then you run the proc freq otherwise you run the proc univariate uh, you know if it is numeric if it is not numeric forget it so if you have to do everything one by one manually though you can do it but it's it's a very cumbersome way of doing and that's what this sas macro has made it very simple very easy to run